All right, Shalom. Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rechakwadash, Kahala Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the elder apostles, great millstone, and salutation, and much love to you, Aki Mater, pushing out his word and truth, sincerity. And uh, Brother Ash from Great Millstone, Tampa Church. And uh, I just want to do a quick video, Lord, to him, and it's edifying, <clears throat> you know, on the prophecy of us being taken out of all these lands that we've been scattered through. And the Lord, Yahweh, well, Yahweh Shai, putting us back into, all right, into all that promised land that was promised unto our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right, so Lord's will, this is edifying. All right, um, we're going to go ahead and start it, uh, just flowing the spirit here. Go in Jeremiah 16, 14. Well, actually, you know what, let me go to... Slightly. Let me go to Second Ezra first. Fifteen. Second Ezra chapter fifteen and ten. All right. This is Second Ezra fifteen and ten. It says, "Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt." All right. And we know that that the we're not the the children of Israel are no longer in the in the modern day Egypt. All right. The the ancient land of Egypt, so to say. <clears throat> All right. That captivity was done away with. Right, the land of and the Israelites were taken out of there by the hand of, of the Most High, uh, with Moses leading them out. This Egypt is talking about the the spiritual Egypt, all right, which is here in America. It says, "But I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before, and I will smite all the land thereof." So that goes to there goes to show you that this is talking about the modern day Egypt, which is America, aka Babylon, aka Sodom. Okay, so this is clearly talking about the days that are that are to come. Okay, where the Lord is going to deliver us as He did before. Okay, in great fashion, even greater than last time. Okay, He's going to bring the same plagues and more that He brought to Egypt, ancient Egypt. So the, those same horrendous plagues that the Lord brought them on uh, Pharaoh. And all the people of Egypt is going to come back here again to the modern day Egyptians and more this time, even more. Because at least Egypt didn't get destroyed with nuclear missiles. All right. It says, verse 12, <clears throat> Egypt shall mourn and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that the Most High shall bring upon it. So there you go. The Lord's bringing all this to the, to the land. Slack it, had to get <clears throat> this dog out of here. But, uh, you know, now let's jump to Jeremiah 16. Because everybody knows about the ancient Egypt and the Exodus, right? They make movies to this day about it. People are still talking about it. And you got children's books, coloring books about it, right? Any, any, but you go for the, ma for the majority, the most part, you ask anybody about ancient Egypt and Exodus, you know, and Moses, they're going to know what you're talking about. All right, well, let's see what the scriptures say, though. This is Jeremiah 16, verse 14. It says, Therefore, behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that it shall no more be said, Yahweh liveth, that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth, Yahweh liveth, that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north, and from all the lands whither he had driven them. And I will bring them again into their, into their land, and that I gave unto their father. So now it's going to be said, talked about this new exodus, all right? Mainly it's going to be here in America, which is the land of the north, and then the deliverance that takes place uh, around the world, wherever the elect is, is scattered, okay? That's what people are going to be talking about, all right? The, the, the exodus of the past is going to be a cakewalk, you know? It's going to, it's going to be com nothing compared to what the Lord is about to bring upon America and upon this whole earth, really. All right. He's going to bring his flock out of there. Like we read in uh, Second Edges, it said, my people is led to, like a flock to the slaughter. So he's comparing Israel, all right, as a, uh, as a flock or sheep. Okay. Well, because what makes up the flock is a bunch of sheep. Okay. So let's get into, well, well let's see what... <clears throat> 
That's why the Lord. Well, let's go back to his, uh, his, uh, Second Ezra. So make sure you read. It says, "Behold, my people was led as a flock to the slaughter." Now, who did you have a shy come for? Who did he come to wake up? That's easy. Matthew 15 and 24. This proves that the Lord only came for the children of Israel. It says, Matthew 15, verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That, that's the lost sheep is what make up the house of uh, or the Lord's flock. All right. That's being led to the slaughter. But now he's not going to suffer them to be uh, in the land of Egypt anymore. Because right? the Lord is coming for his flock. His sheep, as he did before, he came to wake them up, and now he's coming to gather them. <clears throat> this is uh, go to Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 12. It says, Ezekiel 34 and 12, as a shepherd seeketh out his flock. All right, so who, who, who is that shepherd? All right, who is the flock? Who is the lost sheep of the house? It said, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay. So we know, we know who he's talking about. <clears throat> it says, As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the, in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so they the lost, the, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. See? This is it's all about Israel. All right? Salvation, redemption. All right? It's all about Israel. It says, So will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. All right, that's the day of the Lord. A dark and gloomy day. Day of uh, uh, darkness and not light. And again, um, remember I said in uh, Jeremiah 16 that he was going to gather us from the land of the north and all the parts where he, all the lands that he scattered us to. And here's another precept to prove that. It says, out of all places where they have been scattered, because, well, all uh, pursuant to Deuteronomy 28, one of the curses is that we would be scattered among all nations, people, and tongues. All right? All lands. We would be scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. But what then the Lord would come and, and, and gather us from all the four corners of the earth, from all the nations, from all the peoples and tongues. Okay? It's verse 13 says, And I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries and will bring them to their own land. And feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers and in all the inhabited places of the country. <clears throat> I will feed them in a good pasture and upon the high mountains of Israel shall their fold be. There shall, there shall they lie in a good fold and in a fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. There we go. Um, I can keep reading. It says uh, verse 15. I will feed my flock. Again, who's the flock? The flock of the Lord. All right, his, his, his sheep, the Israelites, says, I will feed my flock and I will cause them to lie down, saith the Lord. Yahweh, I will seek that which was lost. Again, what, what did Yahweh say, say in, in Matthew 15? The lost sheep of the house of Israel. I will seek that which was lost and bring again that which was driven away. And I will bind up that which was broken and will strengthen. Then the, then the Lord said he's going to come with healing in his wings. So we're going to bind up that which was broken. It will strengthen that which was sick. He said, I came to heal the sick as well. And this is Old Testament, man. Why do you think Yahweh Shai said these things? That he came he came not for the whole, he came for the sick. All right? came with, he's coming with healing in his wings. He says, but I will destroy the fat and the strong. I will send them with judgment. I will, select, I will feed them with judgment. So the Lord's going to take down those that have been on high and, and restore us into our proper position. Set us back in our land. <clears throat> Who? His sheep. His flock. Okay, let's go back to um, Jeremiah chapter 32. Um, Jeremiah 32 and 37. It says, Behold, Jeremiah 32 and 37, Behold, I will gather them out of all countries whither I have driven them in my anger and in my fury and in great wrath. So, the, the, you know, again, the, the curses befell us because, what well, we disobeyed the Lord and he was angry with us. He was furious. And he brought great wrath upon us. But now he's going to return their captivity. All right. He's going to, he's going to, um, uh, how, what's how I say, uh, reverse it. It says, and I will bring them again into this place and I will cause them to dwell safely. 
and they shall be my people, and I will be their power. And I will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me forever for the good of them and of their children after them. So the Lord's going to give us one heart, meaning one mind. We're going to be all, all on one accord. And it's going to be the accord of Yahweh Shemuel We're going to be perfect in his sight. We're going to keep the law, statutes, and commandments perfectly. All right. We're going to be a righteous and perfect people, a wise and understanding people. All right. Verse 40. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them. That I will not, this is, and this is talking about the new covenant that Christians like to talk about. Who is this talking about? That he's going to gather from all these countries and that he drove them out into. Those same people he drove out and scattered is, is who the new covenant, or the everlasting covenant's for. The new covenant. Covenant. It ain't for everybody. Everybody wasn't scattered in the anger. All right? Because the Lord was angry with them. <clears throat> we just proved the precepts to who this is talking about. His flock. His sheep, all right. Uh, again, it says, uh, verse 40, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from them to do them good, but I will put my fear in their hearts that they shall not depart from me. So, what's the beginning of, of knowledge is the fear of the Lord, you know, roughly paraphrasing. So, if we if we if the Lord's going to put that fear in us, then we're going to automatically just keep his commandments because we know, understand what is the repercussions of, of disobeying him, and that's fear of the Lord. You fear him, therefore you're going to let's obey him, okay? All right, we'll get one last precept here in the uh, Jeremiah 23 now. Uh, verse 7, I think. Yep, pretty much reiterating what he said in the 16th chapter. This is Jeremiah 23 and 7. It says, Therefore, behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that they shall no more say, Yahweh liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but Yahweh liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country and from all countries whither I had driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. So there you go. That, you can't get no more simp uh, clearer than that. It said, which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north countries. I mean, how, what can you say against that, man? All right. The seed, this is the salvation. All right. The kingdom of heaven. The restoration is for who? The seed of Israel, of the house of Israel, the Israelites, the Lord's sheep, the Lord's pasture. Okay, so with that, Lord is willing, this was edifying. Until next time, I say shalom.